The ITAM review certifies licenseware for Oracle Database License Management against their community-sourced standard. You can find this publication available online via the link in the description if you wish for an independent review following this demo. In this short demo, we will show you how to take your raw Oracle database data and calculate the licensing requirements in minutes. To do this, we will use two applications. The Oracle Database Manager app analyzes raw discovery data from a variety of sources to determine option and feature usage, optimization potential, usage evidence, and more. For any organization using Oracle Database technology, it is important to understand this usage information as it plays a key part in determining the licensing requirements and therefore cost and potential risk in terms of compliance. Next, the usage analysis generated is mapped against the raw infrastructure data, considering things like virtualization technologies, relationships, and capping, to calculate the full licensing requirements for any given dataset. This infrastructure mapping is done with the Infrastructure Mapper app. In this demo, we will do the aforementioned for 10 databases. To begin, we will first create a new project. Projects can be used in a variety of ways. Most customers segregate their data based on internal vendor projects, or in the case of partners, to manage their own customer projects and collaborate. Once the project is created, we can begin processing the data. Heading to the Oracle Database Manager app, you will find the currently supported data sources at the time of recording this video. You can process the outputs from the Oracle LMS Collection Tool, FlexERror LMS Option Files for Oracle Database, Oracle's publicly available options, and pack usage statistics, script output, the review light files from the Oracle Review Light, and ServiceNow's Oracle Glass report. First, we will process the review light data for the 10 databases by selecting the review light uploader and simply dragging and dropping the files onto the uploader. The Oracle Database Manager app validates the file name and type to make sure the data is as expected. If an error occurs at this point, it is typically due to the file name not following the expected conventions. You can find all of this information at the Knowledge Center, help.licenseware.io. Once validated, click Process to process the files. This will then upload to Licenseware and the analysis will begin. Note the upload time varies based on the user's internet connection. Once uploaded, however, it takes 1.8 seconds to analyze a database. Next, we need to process the infrastructure data, head to the Apps tab, and click on the Infrastructure Mapper. Currently, the Infrastructure Mapper supports data from BigFix, Oracle's CPU queries, IBM HMC exports, templated hardware data, Flexera Oracle infrastructure, VMware Power CLI script outputs and RV tools export for virtualization, and lastly, ServiceNow infrastructure. Again, New uploaders can be built within one to two weeks upon request. We will upload the raw outputs from the Oracle CPU query script in combination with RV tools for the virtualization details, using their respective uploaders as before. Now, heading to the Reports tab, we can see the reports processing. The Oracle Database Usage Report only needs data from the Oracle Database Manager app, so had completed processing already. The red dial indicates data is still processing. However, the reports are available also during this time. All the data has processed. Please note that as the demo footage has been paused multiple times, the whole process from data upload to reports actually took under one minute to complete, a fraction of the time taken in comparison to manual analysis. First, we will look at the Oracle Database Usage Report. As mentioned, this uses data just from the Oracle Database Manager app. At a glance, you can see how many databases were analyzed on how many devices, along with their versions and additions. Next, we have a graphical representation of the options in use and their usage type. Used, where the given option is in use and requires appropriate licensing. Historical, where the option had previously been used, however, has not been in use in the past 90 days a great opportunity for cost optimization and risk reduction. Cloned, where a database had been cloned bringing with it the licensing implications. These should be reviewed to ensure the licensing and functions are indeed needed, and if not remediated accordingly. Verify. This is where manual verification is required, as the underlying data is not clear enough to determine the option's usage status. Next, we have the Oracle Databases Installed Report, 
showing more detail into each individual database and other licensing insights, such as full product version, if the instance is open, if the database has Golden Gate enabled, or if there are any associated rack, applications, or environments with each database. It is important to understand this sort of information. As an example, Oracle Golden Gate is licensed separately to Oracle Database under the named User Plus or Processor metric, where you must license both the source and target hosts. If needed, you can search across every column to find specific data. Further down, we have the Oracle Options matrix, showing more detail in the option usage for every database and device, showing used, not used, historical usage, and cloned usage. If present, multiple statuses will be shown, such as cloned and historical usage, or historical and verify, where evidence of historical usage can be found but requires verification. At this point, it is good to note that all data within licenseware can be exported into CSV, Excel, or JSON for further manipulation or packaging into deliverables outside of the platform. Additionally, API connection into other platforms can be established to send the analyzed data into pre-existing tools or systems via JSON packages. Next, we shed further light into the results and the analysis steps taken to determine such result. Showing the option name, the final result aka usage status, first and last usage date of the option, and any other potential results. Furthermore, in the interest of transparency, we show both the high-level steps and the detailed analysis steps taken in determination of the results, so you can understand what logic was applied and what data was checked. Lastly, we surface all the evidence to support this in the Options Usage Evidence table, showing for each database, for every given option and feature, its usage status, licensing notes to why it is licensable, and the raw evidence generated from the data to validate the conclusion. It is important to have this information available for validation of our own outputs, alongside the validation of other methods of analysis. In the case where differing opinions on usage is found, we surface all the evidence required to validate our results. An example might be that a colleague, be it a DBA or internal auditor, or an external auditor, third-party tool or external consultant, draws a different conclusion where this data can be used to settle differences on the usage analysis. One other feature to mention is expandable tables, where the data is expanded into a complete table with added functionality, such as grouping by data point, to help target your interpretation. Now heading back to the report section. The final report that will be discussed in this demo will be the Oracle Database Consolidated Report. This takes the usage analysis from the previous report and combines that with the infrastructure analysis considering the hardware topology, all virtualization, capping levels, Oracle core factors, and more, to calculate the licensing requirements for the given dataset, in this case, for the 10 databases we uploaded. For more information on the infrastructure analysis reports generated by the Infrastructure Mapper app, please watch its dedicated guide. At a glance, we can see information around the databases, such as operating system, device type and virtualization, versions, total license requirements and verification tasks if any are present. The pricing used throughout this report is taken from the public Oracle Global Price List in USD. A bit further down, you can see graphical representation of high usage in terms of licensable processor count by running options and licensable processors per database. This information is useful in determining where the highest licensing requirements lie in terms of options and databases. Next, we have the licensing requirements table, showing for every product and feature, the total licensing requirements by both processor and named user plus minimums, along with their associated license and support costs. The last two columns surface whether further information is needed to confirm the result, such as usage verification or missing infrastructure data. We then show the Oracle Database's installed table previously discussed in the last report, before getting to the Hardware Topology table. The Hardware Topology table is generated by the Infrastructure Mapper app, and can be found also in that app's individual reports. It provides detail around the infrastructure relationships, considering things like the structure type, capping level, such as capping at domain, virtual, pool, cluster, physical level, etc. 
along with the licensing requirements and any members associated with said structure. This is extremely important when it comes to the licensing calculations, as the requirements are significantly impacted by the capping levels and structure established by an organization deploying Oracle database technologies. So it is paramount these structures are checked to be correct and maintained accordingly. Lastly, we have the Oracle Server Worksheet Table, a well-known format within the industry. At a glance, the table format doesn't match what is expected. However, upon export, it formats to a standardized OSW. The format from within Licenseware was suggested to us based on partner feedback, showing key information taken from a number of reports that the Oracle Database Manager and Infrastructure Mapper apps generate. As mentioned earlier, to understand more about the other three Infrastructure Mapper reports, please refer to the Infrastructure Mapper app guide. These applications also work in conjunction with the Oracle Entitlements Manager, where we superimpose the entitlement layer over that of the license requirements to determine an effective license position, detailing further compliance insights, risk, and potential cost savings or avoidance. For more information on this, please review the Oracle Entitlements Manager demo. Oracle licensing and data analysis is a complex and time-consuming endeavor. However, we hope this demo shows how quickly and easily you can now get an understanding of licensing requirements and usage to better manage costs and risks moving forward using any data source in a matter of minutes. To find out more or get started, reach out via our online communication channels or to a licenseware representative. Thank you.